Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It is June 24th, 2022. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about a few subjects. What I want people to do right now is to remember the NBA Finals. Golden State Warriors against the Boston Celtics. In your mind, think about the top eight players in that NBA Finals. Right? Eight. Right? How many of them were rookies? If the answer is none, then that'll tell you the importance you should place on the NBA draft. <clears throat> Understand, right now we're all excited. Some bigs went early. Uh, teams think they have a chance, etc. My point to you is if you just look at the playoffs in general, you're going to be very hard pressed to find a single rookie who made a meaningful impact. This is a league where it takes some time for rookies to develop. The chemistry of teams will change over that period of time. It's very rare, very rare, where you get a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or a Michael Jordan or a LeBron James who from day one is the star of their team. That just doesn't happen. So the media right now, they're excited. Fan bases are excited. As you can imagine, the teams picking early in the draft are the most desperate. So they're looking for hope, right? I'm just telling you, it's highly unlikely that any of the guys picked yesterday in their rookie season will have a big impact in the NBA Finals. Let's shift gears. Let's talk about the New Orleans Saints. Now, I've spoken to more than one person. The Saints are kind of like the Raiders, where you talk with some folks who gamble, and they're excited, right? The Saints were a bit of an open secret. The Saints finished 9-8 and eight last year. You look at their division, and, you know, their competition is basically just Tampa Bay. And, of course, they don't have to win the division to make the playoffs, given the playoff structure in the NFL, which allows for wild cards. So the fact that the Saints were 9-8, and eight, even with Sean Payton leaving the team, had a lot of people thinking this is a great sleeper team, right? After all, Carolina doesn't have a quarterback, and Matt Ryan has left the Falcons. My advice is to stay away from the Saints. In fact... Early in the season, because keep in mind, again, the Saints have a new head coach. I know he's been there, right, as a coordinator, but that's different, right? Dennis Allen has been fired before from a head coaching position in the NFL, right? But more importantly, understand that one of the highest impact players in the entire league is Alvin Kamara. Right? Kamara can run between the tackles. Kamara can run routes and catch balls. Kamara is so dangerous that just having him on the field allows New Orleans to pretend they're going to give him the ball. The defense jumps and then, oh, somebody else is open. I don't see how the team can operate without him. Now, Alvin apparently got into some legal problem, right? Right? There was a dust-up in the off-season. Battery. Apparently, the uh, collective bargaining agreement calls for a minimum of six games out for someone who is found to have committed or been involved in a felony battery. So Alvin himself is expecting a six-game suspension. Right, folks, the Saints are not the team to bet on early. Let me go one step further. The early part of their schedule, the first six games, you want to look at them and you want to just imagine the possibility that the Saints might be without Alvin Kamara. 
Now, understand, there's going to be some uncertainty because the NFL is the kind of league where, you know, more than a year in, we still don't know what's going to happen to Deshaun Watson, right? Who knows how long the NFL's investigation is going to take. But here's what you need to know. Alvin himself accept, expects the suspension because he was involved in whatever happened. Right? So to me, that cloud should eliminate the Saints from being a team you bet on early. Also, the season props, I would forget about them. Right? The Saints are not the team to bet on <coughs> to win the NFC. Because Kamara, to me, is one of those players that really makes or breaks a team. Without him, I would argue, they're just not the same. Let's talk about Deshaun Watson. Now, let's be clear here. Watson hasn't played in a long time. Now, that would be terrible if he were on his own team, right, his old team. And he knew the offense, right? He was playing under the same coach. When a quarterback is out for a prolonged period of time, people will look at that quarterback when the quarterback returns. The quarterback can be in his prime. Normally, guys are out and they're returning from injury. I remember Randall Cunningham coming back after a year out. And everyone was concerned. Right? Even though Cunningham was an excellent quarterback, we all wondered, wow, you know, how long is it going to take Randall to catch up to speed? And that was back when you had the old practice rules, where the guys were actually hitting in practice. Well, now the players have more power. The preseason has been watered down. Deshaun Watson has been out a year dealing with major legal drama, right? More than 20 lawsuits, folks. Major legal drama. And now I'm supposed to believe that on a new team with a new coaching staff, with a heavy, according to rumor, NFL suspension hanging over his head, that Deshaun Watson is going to be functional and that the Cleveland Browns are going to be appreciably better than the 8-9 and nine season that they had last year. Folks, I, I'm a non-believer. I know the Steelers have a new quarterback. I understand that Baltimore missed the playoffs. Okay, okay, right? Let's remember that Jamar Chase just got to Cincinnati. Right, Cincinnati, a team that made the Super Bowl last year, might just be getting started. Right, Cincinnati won 10 games last year, and they were just feeling their way around the water. Right, this year they might get more than 10 games. I'll be surprised. Last year it was a general hospital type of scene in Baltimore. Right, so many guys were injured. I'd be surprised if Baltimore doesn't do at least as well as they did last year. And let's remember last year in a lost season, a season where they did not make the playoffs, Baltimore had eight wins. The Pittsburgh Steelers have a new quarterback. You know, Mike Tomlin hasn't been below 500 ever as a pro head coach. Ever. Ever. Right, Tomlin is a guy who won games when Big Ben was out, and he had Hodges in there at quarterback. Mason Rudolph in there at quarterback. Right, so I get the feeling the AFC North is going to be rough and tumble. There are at least four cases that Deshaun Watson was unable to settle. And are you even certain that you're going to have Deshaun Watson this year? I know the contracts are big. I'm surprised the team wants to trade 
Baker Mayfield. Right? I'm not sure who's going to be quarterback for the Cleveland Browns opening weekend. But in this political climate, I think fans need to consider the distinct possibility that Deshaun Watson is not there. Understand, even if he is, it'll be his first game as a Cleveland Brown. I don't care how good the guy is. The guy could be Randall Cunningham. After a year out, when the guy comes back, there are going to be doubts. Here's a guy joining a new team after a year out. At least when Randall came back, he wasn't dealing with legal problems off the field and the risk of being suspended. Here, Deshaun Watson is. Let's be real, too. I know he had great numbers, but it wasn't like when he played two seasons ago, his team was 500. Right? So here, even though I love the talent on the Browns, I'm fading the Cleveland Browns, especially early in the season. Right, folks? Preseason has been watered down. How is Watson on a new team going to get his feet wet? I question the whole situation in Cleveland. Those are my thoughts on June the 24th. We'll update them as things go along. But for now, the NBA draft overrated doesn't really affect my handicapping. Right? The New Orleans Saints, I'm staying away. Right? It's bad enough you lost one of the best coaches in the league. Sean Payton's leaving. Now you're telling me that you're losing arguably the team MVP? <laughs> Come on. Come on. you got to be kidding me. For six games? Folks, that's a lost season. How much of a head start on the Saints are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with Tom Brady going to get in those six games? Right? That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.